My name is Jing Bo Wang. I'm the training manager at NCI. Um, even though I work here uh, for about eight years, uh, the new role of a training manager just to start at the beginning of this year. And in this talk, I would like to share um, the new training strategy that we established this year and some thoughts about how do we measure the impact. Um, I think uh, uh, you would all agree with me that digital skill is one of the key element here to underpin the integrity of research. And this has been addressed in the NCI, um, the next five years roadmap and training is one of the area that we wanna focus and help the research community. Um, at the beginning of this year, I've done a uh, quite intensive uh, consultation internally, external stakeholder one-on-one -on -one interviews, plus uh, hundreds of response from user um, survey about what the requirement on the um, training. Basically, the, the message is quite consistent across all stakeholders saying that, yes, we need training at all different level across different topic. And we actually identify a couple of gaps in this exercise. Uh, the first one is that we know the um, technology moves really fast, but we also observe the community pick up the technology at a different pace. Some of them are um, falling behind and we are thinking, why is that? Uh, I think it's quite obviously that some people may not even know that exists. And sometimes um, people may think, oh, I know it's coming, but I don't see the Im immediate impact on me. So there's no motivation to pick up and learn those things uh, right away. And also, um, I think in the e-research two weeks ago, um, some, some people raised about the question how the Hass community pick up the AI. I think that's a good example to show that they wanted to get on top of those technology, but they don't know how and where to start with. So I think that's where we can help. Um, the second gap we identified is the missing fundamental computation skill in um, many science domain uh, students. If we look at the university curriculum, um, uh, programming and command line and parallel computing are not uh, offered as a formal um, requirement in the graduate program, but people need it. So they have to learn by themselves or they attend the course that, uh, for example, NCI or POSI or uh, Intersect offer to those university sectors. The third gap is that I found the requirement on training is quite heterogeneous. Um, I think that's very obvious because we help, uh, we serve across multiple domain, the data coming in different formats and they use different workflow and libraries. Uh, I feel that the introductory level courses can only go that far to get people on board. But if you wanna further help people to scale up to the next level to intermediate, even advanced, I found the um, specialized training example and customized uh, training workflow to the domain science is really helpful for people to pick up things right away. So based on those gaps, um, I developed a, a, a quite end-to-end -end learning journey where all the learning components identified in that curriculum from absolute beginner in this stock training to become an expert. So, so basically um, we have all these learning components built as a framework and people can pick up the relevant parts to themselves to learn things. Uh, now let me shift to the impact parts and see how how we see that uh, the training help user community. And I think the first one would be a great outcome that people feel now I can do it before I can't. And then uh, they might suffering from uh, uh, difficulties or frustration, why my code doesn't work or why my code take ages to finish. Um, with the training on parallel, for example, they can run things at scale. And of course, I think 
in the end, from learning and teaching experience, it's all about building confidence. And I think training is a good way to help learn, uh, all the students and uh, researchers building confidence, adopting new technology. And I don't know, regardless whether they realize or not, by introducing the new tool and new platform, we actually gradually change their workflow. And if they adopting the new tools, they, they, they change the new environment. They basically uh, working in a faster mode. And I found that uh, especially the group who intend to adopt those latest technology and apply to their research domain more quickly, often help to put themselves in a more competitive uh, position to, uh, to have a higher chance to win the grants and publish high quality journal articles in those um, tier one research um, articles in a much faster mode. And of course, uh, I, I'm passionate about training because we, I feel that um, this is a two-way communication. Through that training, we hear exactly what people need and then we address those needs through the training material. We build a trust and a supportive community with each other. One of the way to quantify those impacts is the is environmental impact on the job efficiency. So if we think about uh, after training, people can run 10 times faster than they used to be, then it can be translated as an electricity bill that can be further interpolated as um, how much carbon dioxide emission generated by the research community. And that is a quantified environmental impact that we've done through the training course. Um, now I'm gonna uh, shift them from the, uh, the metaphor of animal picture to the real science here by sharing another observation about the impact, which I see that um, the training community really inspire the cross-disciplinary research leverage. I, I will use two uh, real examples to explain what do I mean by that. The first one is uh, signal processing. So the picture here shows you uh, an oil reservoir where high fluid, high speed fluid was injected into the well and forced the rock open fracture, uh, fractures. That fracture allow the trapped oil come out of the reservoir. When the fracture happened, it's actually a small earthquake. So the signal is like this. It's an impulse signal. On the right hand side, it's a human body's um, nerve impulse. The signal is, this, is very, very similar. Look like uh, the micro seismic event. The commonality of the technical issue behind those two different scenarios are that they both suffer from very big overwhelming noise as a background interfering the signal. So it also means that consequently the same knowledge or uh, technology of signal to noise ratio improvement can be applied to two different scenario, but working on the same type of time series of data. The second example is about image. If we think about an image in the computer science, it's basically represented as a matrix with X and Y as the um, position of the pixel. And the third column could be the color scale from two to 255. And in the colorful image, it's a combination of the RGB, but still it's a matrix. But to scientists, that matrix means completely different things in different domains. This, this one is a, brain scan in the medical science. And this example is the satellite image. And this example is the climate model, the, the paper published in Nature last year. The commonality between those examples are that image either have a low resolution or some part are missing, especially in this climate model, some uh, area like the remote area in the polar or in the middle of um, Pacific Ocean, we often suffer from the sparsity of the data. And using the uh, deep learning neural network technology, we can actually reconstruct those uh, image with a higher resolution or backfill the missing bit. So the technology behind are really 
um, say similar. So the, my point is that by bringing the different community together and they watch each other and see, oh, I've used this technology, maybe it can be applied to my research. And that's, I think, the motivation and impact to the research community through this training forum. Um, now, the question is, how do we quantify them? Uh, at NCI, I did a quick analysis uh, in the beginning of the uh, consultation process to see how many tickets are there and what they are talking about. So I, I used a natural language processing technique to analyze those texts and to classify by topic. So I identify uh, a number of most frequently asked questions. So through that classification, I got a pretty good idea uh, to understand what is the daily question from the user uh, support uh, group. And then we can address how to help to answer those questions by offering training courses or good documentation. And of course, I mentioned about system log, about uh, the job efficiency that as another quantified in measurement. But um, I also want to throw something here, uh, uh, the idea of a knowledge graph, uh, how to measure the long-term um, impact of the training by introducing the new tools and accelerate uh, researcher with, um, with advanced training courses, how do we impact the whole research life cycle? Here, um, I use this node to represent user, organization, grants, publication, and collaboration. Each node can be identified with a persistent identifier. And I built this model um, early on when I was a data collection manager at NCI, we wanted to see the impact of the data collection. So on the left hand side, you can see the graph that we build is composed by the creator of the data and data collection themselves and the publication that cite the data. And we wanted to see the dynamic ecosystem of the data impact between the people and the publication. Uh, system. And then we augment this graph with international database with ORCID so that we can see further down the track what is the impact of the data collection. The reason I want to quote this work is that can we build um, such a kind of graph to measure the impact through the whole research life cycle by introducing an excellent training program? So finally, I want to just wrap up with back again with my animal theme today is that I really believe collaboration is a key word. So recently we announced a collaboration in partnership with Intersect that they can help us to offer introductory courses to our user. That response is I am totally overwhelmed with hundreds of seats or booked out within just three days. And I feel deeply passionate about training. I saw Claire is there. I remember in my previous days working together with Claire, offer training courses with people. We always get feedback. And that's the passion and love that I want to bring to the community. Of course, translating those passion and love into practice, I think quality is one of the keywords, making sure that the tutorial that we created has quality. And that really make a big difference. When we're marching together, we also want to make sure that nobody is falling behind, especially for people who don't know where to start. I think we have a key role to play and help each other. With that, I'm going to um, finish with the general email address training.nci at nu.edu.au. Uh, Please reach out um, if you have any comments, idea, and uh, intention to collaborate with us. And by the way, we're also recruiting a few uh, training officers as a casual position to help us. With that, I'll stop and hand back to Anastasios. Thank you.